Welcome to Nursing Simplified, the smart way to survive nursing school. Here at Nursing Simplified, we like to break down topics in a simple and easy to remember format. In today's episode, we're talking about the difference between subjective and objective data. So let's dive in, shall we? Do you get confused about the difference between subjective and objective data? What's the difference between a sign and a symptom? Well, in today's video, we're going to clear this up once and for all. During a comprehensive patient assessment, we collect both subjective and objective information. Combining the two types provides us with a complete and well-rounded assessment. So why do we need to know the difference between the two? Let's first talk about what subjective and objective really mean. Let's say you look outside of the window and it's raining. You know this because you can see that it's cloudy, there are raindrops falling from the sky, and there are puddles on the ground. Now imagine you look outside of the window and it's raining. And you might say to yourself, look how beautiful the rain is. I'm so excited because I love the rain. Well, this is the difference between subjective data and objective data. Subjective and objective are opposites. Anything objective sticks to the facts. We can determine it's a rainy day because we see that it's raining. There's no way to misinterpret that information. It's raining and that's a fact. However, anything subjective has feelings. Only the subject can describe how rainy days make them feel or whether or not they enjoy rainy days. So, objective, it's raining out. Subjective, I love rainy days. Let's look at it another way. Subjective data comes from the patient's point of view. These are symptoms and they can include feelings, perceptions, and concerns obtained through interviews. Subjective data has to be reported by the patient. It also helps to think of our patient as our subject. On the other hand, Objective data can be observed. Objective data is, by definition, observable and measurable. There is no way to dispute the facts. In fact, if you had another nurse come into the patient's room and perform an objective assessment, it would be exactly the same as yours. And this is because we're looking at facts with no room for interpretation. They are signs obtained through observation physical examination, and laboratory and diagnostic testing. We gather this data or these signs by using our own senses. When we're gathering this data, we're simply looking at the patient as an object. Take this beach ball, for example. We can certainly collect data about the ball by using our five senses. It's round, it's pink and bluish, soft, it's room temperature, it doesn't react to anything. It's bouncy and it sounds hollow when you tap on it, and it kind of smells like plastic. You can only assess what you can see, hear, touch, taste, or smell. However, the ball doesn't have feelings. It can't communicate back to us, so the ball can't tell us how it feels. It also helps to think of this ball as an object. Object equals objective. If for whatever reason, a patient is unable to communicate with you, only objective data is available. These can include things like vital signs, physical assessment, auscultation, percussion, palpation, visualization and observation, any notable odors, and lab and diagnostic testing results. Okay, so now we understand the difference between subjective and objective data, but why should that be important? Well, imagine a 50-year-old female comes into your emergency room. She's complaining of chest pain that started 45 minutes ago when she was at her aerobics class. She says that the pain is a 10 out of 10 and that it radiates down her arm and up into her jaw. Nothing seems to make the pain better. She states she feels like her heart is fluttering in her chest, she can't catch her breath, and she's very nauseated. Even before we examine her, we fear that she's having a heart attack or myocardial infarction. Now imagine 
This same woman comes in, but she's unable to communicate with us. We have no idea what she's feeling or what any of her symptoms are. Her caregiver called the ambulance because she couldn't wake her up and she noticed that she was very sweaty. Without that subjective data, we're at a disadvantage. There could be so many different things going on with her. She could have an infection, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, or a number of other conditions. Of course, with both patients, we do a physical assessment, vital signs, blood work, other diagnostic tests such as a chest x-ray and EKG, and eventually we determine that this patient is indeed having a heart attack and we begin treatment immediately. In the first scenario, the person reported what she was feeling. Those symptoms are clues that can often point us in the right direction. In the second scenario, we didn't have that information. So without those clues, we were at a disadvantage. But when we have those clues, that subjective data, in addition to tests and studies that have factual results, objective data, we were able to diagnose her sooner, most importantly, get her treatment started sooner. Okay, let's apply what we've learned to a few case studies. In our first situation, you have a 48-year-old male patient who comes in stating, I feel like I can't breathe. The patient's respirations are 28 breaths per minute, and their heart rate is 115 beats per minute. The patient grabs his chest and says, my chest hurts so bad, please help. You ask the patient to rate the pain on a scale from 0 to 10, 10 being the worst pain ever. The patient replies that it's a 10 out of 10, it hurts so badly. You then ask the patient to describe what the pain feels like. The patient reports that his pain feels like pressure. Your patient then starts to become diaphoretic and pale. You perform an EKG that shows sinus tachycardia. The pulse oximeter shows 100% on room air and the patient's blood pressure is 120 over 80. Okay, so let's list all of the data that we've collected and then decide whether it's subjective or objective. This patient is diaphoretic, pale, has tachycardia, chest pressure, pain 10 out of 10, shortness of breath, pulse ox is 100%, respirations are 28, heart rate is 115, and the patient is showing sinus tachycardia on an EKG. So the first piece of data that we have is that the patient is diaphoretic we can see diaphoresis. Diaphoresis just means that the patient's sweaty. So diaphoretic would go under objective. We can see it. It's a fact. The next piece of data that we have is that the patient is pale. We can see that the patient's pale. So that's another objective piece of data. The next piece of data is tachycardia. Tachycardia is measurable and observable, so that goes under objective. The next piece of data that we have is chest pressure. Well, I can't see the patient's chest pressure. I can't measure it. The patient has to report it. Therefore, it's subjective. The same goes with the pain, 10 out of 10. I can't decide how much pain the patient's in. Only the patient can report it. That's another one that goes under subjective. The next piece of data is shortness of breath. Now this one can be a little confusing, but the patient is reporting that they feel short of breath. They feel like they can't catch their breath. It's not something that we can see or measure. It's reported by the patient. Therefore, it's subjective. The next piece of data is the pulse ox of 100%. We can measure this, it's a fact, it goes under objective. Next, we have the respirations of 28. Again, we can measure this, so it goes under objective. The same goes for that heart rate of 115. We can measure it, there's no disputing it, it's a fact. Therefore, it's objective. And lastly, our EKG shows sinus tachycardia. 
This is definitely measurable. This is a result of a diagnostic test. Therefore, it is objective. So for our first situation, this is the way that our data breaks down. Under subjective, we have chest pressure, pain, 10 out of 10, and shortness of breath. Under objective, we have diaphoretic, pale, tachycardia, pulse ox of 100%, respirations of 28, heart rate of 115, and sinus tachycardia on an EKG. In our next situation, a patient tells you they cut their finger with a razor about 20 minutes ago, and then shows you the cut on their finger. The cut is one inch long, located on the lateral left pinky finger, and it's approximately one centimeter deep. The patient states, my finger is bleeding. Can you get me a bandage? The patient states he is very anxious and he's noticeably trembling. He reports his pain is six out of 10. So let's take a look at the different pieces of data that we collected. The patient was cut by a razor. It's currently bleeding. The cut is approximately one inch long and one centimeter deep. It happened about 20 minutes ago. Pain is six out of 10. Patient's anxious and trembling. The first piece of information that we have collected was that this cut was from a razor. We didn't see it happen. The only way that we could possibly know it happened this way is if the patient told us. Therefore, this would go under subjective data. Next, the patient is currently bleeding. Now, don't get tricked here. Yes, the patient said to us, my finger is bleeding, can you get me a bandage? But we can see this. We can see with our own eyes that the patient's cut is bleeding. Therefore, that is objective. Okay, so this cut is approximately one inch long and one centimeter deep. The clue here is that you have measurements. And remember, all objective data is measurable and observable. So the fact that you can measure this makes it an objective piece of data. This cut happened about 20 minutes ago. We didn't see it happen. The only way that we know this is because the patient is telling us that that's what happened. Just like the patient told us that the cut was from a razor. Therefore, this is subjective. Next, we have a pain level of six out of 10. The way that we know that this patient's pain is six out of 10 is because he told us. Therefore, this is subjective. The patient is anxious. We know this because the patient has told us that he's feeling anxious. Therefore, this goes under subjective. Lastly, the patient is trembling. Now, he may be trembling because he's anxious, but we can see the trembling. We can actually see him tremoring and shaking. Therefore, this goes under objective. Okay. So this is how the information breaks down from this scenario. Under subjective, the cut was from a razor. It happened 20 minutes ago. Pain is a six out of 10, and the patient is feeling anxious. All of these require the patient's input for us to know that these are true. Under objective, the patient is currently bleeding. He has a cut approximately one inch long and one centimeter deep and he is visibly trembling. All right, let's look at our last scenario. A patient is holding their stomach and moaning. They say, I can't take the pain anymore. It feels like somebody is cutting my belly with a jagged hot knife. The patient's face is red and sweaty. Heart rate is 115 beats per minute and their respirations are shallow. The patient's abdomen is hard, round, distended, and when you percuss over each quadrant, you hear dull, short tones. The patient then informs you they feel dizzy. You perform an EKG, and the results are normal sinus rhythm. The patient starts to cry and pleads with you to help them. 
You reassure them that they are in the right place and that you are so happy to be taking care of them. They dry their tears and thank you. So the information that we've gathered is the patient's face is red and sweaty. They have burning sharp pain, heart rate of 115 beats per minute. Abdomen is hard, round, and distended. There are percussed dull noises. The patient is holding their abdomen and crying, and the patient has dizziness. The first piece of information is that the patient's face is red and sweaty. We can see this, therefore it's objective. Next, we have burning sharp pain. Well, we wouldn't know about this unless the patient told us. Therefore, that goes under subjective. The patient's heart rate is 115 beats per minute. This is measurable. We can't dispute it. Therefore, it's objective. Okay, next we have an abdomen that is hard, round, distended, and there are dull noises to percussion. We have to use our senses to determine these things. We can see that the abdomen is round and distended. We can feel that it's hard. We can hear the dull noises to percussion. Therefore, this is objective. The patient is holding their abdomen and crying. We can see this with our eyes. Therefore, this is objective. Lastly, our patient has dizziness. Dizziness is a feeling. The patient has to report this to us for us to know that it exists. Therefore, it's subjective. Okay, so this is the breakdown for our final scenario. Under subjective, we have burning sharp pain and dizziness. Under objective, we have patient whose face is red and sweaty. Heart rate is 115 beats per minute. Abdomen is hard, round, distended, and has dull noises to percussion. The patient is holding their abdomen and crying. Okay, so for a quick recap, subjective is about feelings, where objective is about facts. Subjective has to do with symptoms, where objective has to do with signs. Subjective has to be reported by the patient, or subject, whereas objective has to be collected by assessment. Don't forget the beach ball. In case no one has told you today, you are beautiful, you are needed, you are loved, you are strong, and most importantly, my friend, you are enough. Now go be the amazing nurse that you were meant to be. And always remember, nursing is a work of heart. I'll see you in the next video.